people might think what you just said is crazy because we're talking about using steroids or using drugs, but people do this all the time. You mentioned earlier, somebody studying to be a doctor, people sacrifice their health all the time. Mm. They're like, man, I'm, I'm going for my PhD. Yeah. I'm not going to sleep. I'm just going to study, study, study. I'm going to get to my goal. And even when they do get to their goal and even when they do become a doctor, What would you say to some of the people that might be listening that uh, are utilizing, you know, a little bit at the moment and they're thinking about doing more and more? Uh, would you kind of advise against it or do you think yeah. people just need to kind of go for it here and there? Honestly, I think you need to go for it sometimes, but you also need to modulate your health. Yeah, because sometimes like you're, you have aspirations and, and you have your long term health and, and sometimes there's a little bit of sacrifice involved really because I, I honestly think like unless you do real hormone replacement, i want to interrupt you for over that i want to interrupt you for a second because i think that yeah. that's a really really good point and people do this all the time people might think what you just said is crazy because we're talking about using steroids or using drugs but people do this all the time you mentioned earlier somebody studying to be a doctor people sacrifice their health all the time mm. they're like fuck it man i'm i'm going for my phd yeah i'm not going to sleep i'm just going to study 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 i'm going to get to my goal and even when they do get to their goal and even when they do become a doctor their foot is still on the gas pedal and they're like when i'm 35 or 40 i'll figure it out i'll fucking relax a little bit more i'll you know take some days yeah. off of work but <laughs> right this is the way this is the way all of us maybe not all of us, this way many of us think think uh so it's very it's a lot more common than maybe so like think. there's always i think there's always some sort of sacrifice involved when you want to be successful like right now my business is booming i'm, I'm working every day until 10 o'clock that's sacrificing my relationship right and then when you want to accomplish something else with business maybe there's a lot of studying involved and maybe you need to take an adderall or a modafinil or or right ruin friendships because you can't go out and then when you have want to have fun you go out to the club there might be some recreational drugs involved which sacrifice your health you have a great time but the next day you feel horrible right and and even with alcohol which is generally accepted go inject your liver enzymes the next day you're <laughs> sacrificing your health when you go to the to the bar so i think unfortunately like everything that's exciting in life it will take some sort of toll out of you <laughs> Including the you know the, the dangerous sports and driving motorcycles and driving fast cars, it, at ri risk to a reward. And I think sometimes it's just required to get ahead um, because right that's what competitions are for. Um, competitions you want to see the strongest, the fact is the biggest, bigger, harder, uh, stronger, and faster. And yeah, there's there's some pharmacology involved sometimes, you know. And I, I don't think that's inherently wrong um, un unless you uh, end up dying over it, right? And then then it's then it's a little bit too much so and you have to do a little bit of a blood work analysis and, and imaging and along the way but i think nowadays it's more understood and accepted than it, it was 10 years ago 20 years ago when we always see what were the magazines this perfect physique it, it, what we would think is in a perfect state of health and now it's a little bit more open and we actually do see people passing um so that uh, hopefully that makes everybody a little bit more cautious because happens way too much you know sometimes you scroll through instagram you see another black and white picture and you're like here we go again mm -hmm. yeah. um what about uh blasting yeah. cruising versus staying on a uh i guess i'll say optimized that's that seems to be a good uh common uh i guess name but yeah um because you said you blasted and cruised for i think uh, i mean 10 years or so um yeah nine years yeah, yeah. so would you would you say that that's kind of one of those things like if your health markers are in line, go for it or is maybe, yeah, cruise or not cruising, but just being at a lower dose for longer might be the better approach. So I feel that like a real hormone replacement, a lower dose, there's, there's like a dose dependent response similar to endogenous testosterone production where let's say you're producing a certain amount of testosterone you're at the middle of the reference range and you're gaining when you reach your true natural potential a pound to two pounds per year and then let's say you go on hormone replacement you raise your serum concentrations a little bit you keep that exactly stable you don't make any adjustments and then at one point you'll still gain one pound or two pounds per year 
So it will be easier to maintain. So what I did, blasting and cruising, okay, you, you blast, you go on a, a higher dose. Hopefully you do that in the context of being a full-time athlete. I don't see there's a reason for anybody to blast if you don't have everything in place to, to actually put those steroids to work, right? So let's say you're living like a true athlete and you're putting those steroids to work and you have everything in your life designed to make the most out of it. Then when you go back to a cruise, a lower dose is required to sustain most of your accomplishment. But you will not probably not reach these accomplishments without raising the dose. So I don't think that, let's say if I were to go on hormone replacement my entire life, right? At the age of 26 till now, I don't think I would have looked like that, like in the pictures or lifted, you know, heavy weights, right? So and, and would I have a job in the fitness industry? Probably not, because I would never feel inclined to learn more beyond hormone replacement. So, yeah, I, I think, I've, I know I'm a health guy, but I think it's sometimes just required. You know, I coach people for bodybuilding shows and their dosages are not moderate. You know, so are they winning? Yeah. <laughs> you know, um, there's something uh, I was curious about because you mentioned, you kind of alluded to it a little bit about fertility. And I know all of my questions seem to be doing, mm -hmm. seem to be trying to scare people out of it. And to be perfectly honest, especially for the young cats, I am trying to scare them out of it. Um, uh, but one thing I will say is that I'm really happy that like you yourself, Mark, um, a lot of what you guys talk about is getting constant imaging, getting constant blood tests, because as much as this stuff is mm. expensive, like, uh, for example, your, your, your fatty liver stuff, if you weren't paying that money to get those tests done, which most people yeah. don't do, you wouldn't have caught that. So uh, I'm happy that people are understanding yeah. what it takes to do this stuff safely. But now I want to scare them again. So as far as the fertility is concerned, and you mentioned, it, it's funny, I had a client when I was when I was 22 training people in person. I had this guy come to me to train him, right? And he's like, yeah, I want to get leaner. I was like, okay, cool. Let, let's start. And three months later, I'm like, why? First off, I'm trying to caliper his skin and I couldn't separate his skin from his muscle. So I didn't know what was going on there. And then number two, he didn't drop any weight. His body didn't change at all. I'm like, what the fuck is going on with this dude? And then he finally told me, he's like, yeah, when I was younger, I did some stuff. I was running some stuff. Um, and I was like, okay, well, well, go to the doc, get yourself checked. Let's just, just, I don't, I can't work with you. Like, by the way, I wasn't giving him drugs or anything. I was just training him normally. I didn't know why we couldn't get results, mm -hmm. but he went to the doctor. He came back to me and he was like, ah, uh, well, doc says I can't really have kids anymore. Um, and because of some shit that he did, maybe he didn't do a PCT that shit or whatever, but like he, he was like 25 at the time and he was told that he couldn't have kids. So as far as fertility is concerned, number one, what could happen that could lead a man not to have kids? What could happen that could lead to that? And number two, what do people have to do to avoid that from happening? Um, well, ideally, you want to do a testicular ultrasound before you get started, just to see if your testicles are functioning as they should be before you even touch steroids. Right? I didn't do that. Because again, the information was not talked about. So I did that recently. Uh, interesting experience, <laughs> needless to say, um, just to see if there was any fibrosis, right? Because I did turn off my testicles for a decade, even though I'd run some ACG or HMG intermittently to sustain testicular function. I was not using that the entire way through. Um, so I was a little bit nervous because I, I married and at one point I would like to have kids. So after I, I did my post psychotherapy, I did some imaging on the testicles and that all appeared normal. And, and yeah, I, I know you want to scare some people, but my fertility came back also. Um, yeah, but I do see, I do see that a lot of, like some, it depends on what you run also in your individual response. So let's say you're on um, a lot of training, right? A lot, a long time. Let's say you're actively competing and you're just running training year round. It sounds horrendous, but people are doing this, right? People are doing this and you're, and it's, there's so many androgens, like potent androgens in your system that also activate a progesterone receptor that you just get very impaired fertility. You're not using ACG or any other preventative measure to sustain the, uh, testicular function. Yeah, then maybe you shut it down permanently. And I, I do know guys that can't have kids. I mean, there's a lot of pro bodybuilders who are 40, 50 and don't have any kids. 
And, and that's that's a big sacrifice, in my opinion. Just they, and some guys don't even get to the Olympia. You know, they compete for years and years and years, and they don't win a pro show. But now they can't have kids, right? And the problem is pros are also not open about the dosage. They all downplay it, which I completely understand because they have sponsorships that they have to worry about, which pay a decent amount of money. So it, it doesn't pay off to be honest and open. And of course, general population would cringe. But if you run very high dosages for long periods of time and, and you don't incorporate an ACG or an HMG or, or other methods to sustain testicular function, yeah, I think it's a, it's a risk. It's absolutely a risk that you will shut yourself down uh, regarding kids permanently.